Hey everybody, Ryan here at eTrailer. Today on our 2021 Ford Ranger, we're gonna be taking a look at and showing you how to install the Air Force One Supplemental Braking System. So there's gonna be a total of five main components needed to flat tow your Ranger down the road. First one's gonna be your base plate, and that's gonna provide us with a uh, solid and reliable connection point. That way we can hook our tow bar up to it. A tow bar is gonna be the second component, and that's gonna be the physical link that connects the front of your Ranger to the back of your motorhome. Third main component is going to be safety cables. These are pretty self-explanatory. These are gonna be there in the event of an unlikely disconnect. They're gonna keep everything paired together. The fourth main component is going to be tow bar wiring. And this is gonna transfer the lighting functions from the back of your coach to the back of your truck, uh, keeping you safe and legal. And last but not least, the fifth main component is going to be your braking system. And what this is gonna do is apply the brakes in your Ranger whenever you hit the brakes uh, in your motorhome, helping to bring you to a more predictable stop. So the Air Force One braking system is gonna be designed to work uh, with RVs or coaches that have air brakes. And so if that's your case and you're someone that flat toes quite often, uh, this is definitely the way to go. These uh, braking systems are super reliable. Uh, we rarely have any issues at all with them, um, even after people put a lot of miles on them. Um, so that box is checked and they're super easy to use. You know, once they're installed, there's really not a whole lot to it. Uh, you're gonna have to hook up your airline and your breakaway switch, and that's really about it. So it can't uh, get much simpler. And I will say, um, if you're someone that has those air brakes and don't flat toe all that often and really aren't looking for a permanent type option, just to uh, kind of give you a solution to that, you could also use the Blue Ox Patriot 3 portable type braking system. Again, super easy to use, really reliable. Uh, that'll work great uh, as well for those of you that maybe change their flat tow vehicle quite often. You get a new car every year or two, whatever the case may be, you can always easily switch that out with it. So um, regardless of case, uh, Air Force One here, very reliable and a great choice. So just kind of a quick rundown on how this kit actually works is it's gonna have this tank with it, right? And this is gonna tap into your motorhome's air supply system. So it's gonna be uh, more or less a reserve full of air. And what's gonna happen is when you apply the brakes in the motorhome, air is going to come through the line, through this coiled air line here at the back of your motorhome. Whenever it's not plugged in or anything, it's not gonna leak or create any issues like that. So nothing to worry about there. Just plugs right in. And so that air is gonna be transferred to the fitting here at the front of your Ranger. And so that's gonna go through the operating unit side of the truck and eventually tell the brake pedal to get pushed down. And so it's gonna be um, almost immediate. So like truly proportional, if you will. Um, that way you're gonna have a great response time and um, feel whenever you're driving down the road. You know, the Ranger's gonna hit the brakes when you want it to, not before or any later. The Ranger's brake pedal is going to be applied at the same rate that you apply the brake pedal up here in the motorhome. So just to kind of give you an example on how it's gonna work, let's say if we're uh, rolling up to a red light and you're kind of just halfway on the brake, you know, just kind of pushing a little bit, Ranger's gonna do the same thing. On the other hand, let's say maybe there's an accident up ahead, um, we're on the interstate, something like that, and we really have to come to an emergency stop and really hammer on that brake pedal, Ranger's gonna do the same thing. So uh, overall, it's just gonna be really smooth and um, much more of a safe stop. A nice touch that I like is the fact that we have an indicator light uh, on our Ranger. And so whenever the brake pedal is applied and we're hooked up to our motorhome, we can see that light uh, illuminate red. And that's just a very quick way to keep an eye on things and make uh, sure that the brake pedal is actually being pushed down uh, in our Ranger when we're going down the road. So something that's pretty nice about this kit too is since the motorhome side of the kit and the vehicle side of the kit are kind of their own deals, uh, you can kind of grow into it or grow with it. 
And what I mean by that is, let's say if you ended up picking up a, another vehicle and you wanted to flat tail your Ranger and that other vehicle, um, you can actually pick up what's called the second vehicle kit. All right, and so that's just gonna be the uh, equipment that you need for the second vehicle, and that'll allow you to hook up to the same motorhome and flat tow behind it. Or if you end up getting rid of the Ranger, picking up a different vehicle, again, you can grab that second vehicle kit, rig it up on that vehicle, and still be able to safely tow behind your motorhome. Same thing for the motorhome as well. Let's say, um, let's say if you upgrade motorhomes and you get a newer one, whatever the case may be, and it has those air brakes, you can also get just the motorhome side. That way you can put just the motorhome side on there and still tow your Ranger. Uh, that's ideal to me because I want it makes sense to have to pick up the whole kit again when you already have half of the components. So a uh, really cool option to have and something just to keep in mind. So at the end of the day, probably my favorite kit for motorhomes that have air brakes. It's very solid and one you can count on, uh, which is really important when you're over the road. Now, as far as the installation goes, um, it's really not super involved, nothing like too hard to do, but it does take quite a bit of time, just getting under the motorhome to do that side of things. Uh, the vehicle side goes pretty quick. Everything's pretty easy to get to. Um, but with that said, as long as you stay focused, shouldn't give you a ton of issues. Speaking of which, let's go ahead and put it on together now. So to begin our Air Force One, installation on our vehicle side. First thing we're gonna do is just route a couple of wires and an airline tube. And that's because we're installing this when we have our bumper removed because we did our base plate and everything else at the same time. So if that's your case, you definitely wanna do this um, before you put the bumper back on. It can be done with the bumper on, it's just a little more tricky. So what I did was take our airline tube because this will get plugged into our fitting eventually that'll be mounted to our bumper. And then I just took two wires. That way, if we need to extend our breakaway switch wires, which will also be mounted here, um, which chances are good, we will need to extend them. We have them right here. They'll be easy to work with and easy to hook up. So with that said, I just loosely routed everything kind of along the side here, kind of up and behind our headlight, where it goes up into the engine compartment and from there, we can kind of just let them hang until we're uh, ready to get them hooked up. So now that we have our bumper on, you can understand a little bit better why we routed our airline tube and a couple of wires uh, beforehand. With that said, once our bumper is on, we can mount up some of our components. And the first one is gonna be the breakaway switch, which is this right here. This is really straightforward, there's actually a factory pre-drilled hole in our bumper bracket. All right, and all I did was take the included bolt that comes with our breakaway switch, run it through the hole in the bracket on our bumper beam, and secure it down. While we're right here, we'll go ahead and get the breakaway switch wires hooked up. So there's gonna be an orange one and a black one. And all I did was connect them to those two extra wires that we ran down here earlier. So I put the black one from the breakaway switch to the black wire that I ran down and the orange wire from the breakaway, I connected that to the brown wire that we ran down. And I just used some heat shrink buck connectors, uh, which you can grab your D trailer. The ones in the kit will work just fine, but I definitely prefer the heat shrink so it gives us a lot more protection against corrosion, things like that. But with that said, we can then hook up our air fitting. And all I did was straighten this bracket out. There's usually a 90 degree bend on the back of it. I straightened it out and drilled a hole in the middle of it. Then I actually just used the bolt that's holding on our uh, six way plug here to secure it to that bracket. So I think it turned out really well. And while we're right here as well, um, we might as well hook up our airline tube. All right, so this simply just plugs in to the back of the fitting. And that's how all of these airline fittings are gonna work. But there is something you do need to pay attention to. And that is the type of cut that's on the end of it. You want it to be nice 
and clean and straight. You don't want any burrs or anything like that. So what you want to avoid is using a regular pair of snips. Um, what you can use is a, is a razor blade, a tubing cutting uh, tool. I like to use a tool like this. You just want to make sure it's nice and crisp, no burrs or anything. And that's a really good example of how all of these cuts look when we plug them in. But these are just quick connects, so you simply just push it right into place, make sure it's seated, and that's really all there is to it. So as you know, we uh, previously routed our couple wires and our airline tube up into this area, and that's exactly where I mounted up our main operating unit. Um, pretty simple stuff here. I just used some self-tapping screws and ran this into the core support. Nice and solid, not gonna go anywhere. With that said, the airline that goes to the front of our truck, you're gonna cut that the length and plug it into this fitting here, just like we did the other one. That fitting's gonna be labeled air in. And that's where the air from our motorhome, our coach is gonna uh, come into our operating unit. With that said, We have our black wire, that extra one we ran, and I just used, again, a buck connector, which I've yet to heat, heat shrink. I will seal up the ends here in a moment. But that's just gonna get connected to one of the black wires coming out of our main operating unit. Doesn't matter which one. Um, in our case, I use the one closer to the top. I'll push it out of the way. The brown wire that came up this is it right here. What you're gonna do is take the remaining length of brown wire. You should have about four or five foot left at this point. Strip back the ends and twist them together. And uh, what we're gonna do in a moment is connect a fuse holder to this. With that said, we'll kind of just set that to the side for now. And we'll move back to our operating unit. Let's talk about these, this other black wire that's coming out of it. This is simply just going to need to get grounded. And you're going to connect a ring terminal to it and utilize this factory ground right here. You're going to pull that bolt out using an 8 millimeter socket, put the ring terminal over the bolt, and simply tighten it back down. Let's go ahead and move on to our brown wire here that comes from our breakaway switch. Once you have these two ends tied together, you're gonna take one of your butt connectors, put it over both ends, and we're gonna crimp it down. The other end is gonna get connected to the included fuse holder. So this is our fuse holder. Make sure the fuse is not installed. I already went ahead and stripped back the insulation and crimped on a ring terminal. We're going to strip back the other end to expose that bare wire underneath. That is going to get plugged into the other end of that buck connector there. And go ahead and crimp that down. We'll come back with our heat source and seal up the ends. Now what we need to do is find a spot to hook up our ring terminal here on the positive side of our battery. I'm gonna choose a stud right here just cause uh, there's no wires or fuses, anything like that going to it. So kind of isolate that one. I'm gonna remove that nut using a 10 millimeter socket. Slide over the ring terminal. Simply tighten it back down. Now let's go ahead and focus on getting our vacuum line hooked up uh, to our main operating unit there. What we're first going to do is take one of the check valves and maybe an inch or two long piece of included hose. Put the black end of the check valve into the hose. These just push in. They're barbed so um, you know the hose isn't going to come off very easily at all. So we're going to take the big length of hose, put that on the other end, like so. 
And then this side is going to plug onto that barbed fitting on our operating unit. All right, you, you want to make sure that the black portion of the chuck valve is going to face towards the operating unit. So go ahead, get in there. And slide it on. Now what we can do is kind of prepare all of our other fittings and lines. That way we can tap into our factory vacuum line. It's just easier to kind of piece everything together uh, like this as opposed to trying to do it one by one, you know, bent over in the engine compartment. So to make things easier, I'm actually using this um, adapter fitting and this end will plug directly into the brake booster. Uh, I suggest using one of these. We actually sell these here at eTrailer. They look a little bit different, but the concept is the same and they work exactly the same. So what we're gonna do, this side here with the seal, is gonna go to our brake booster. So we'll leave this empty. This T fitting, this one that comes out here, that's eventually gonna plug into that long 3 8 line that we ran off of our operating unit. And this side will connect to our factory vacuum line. So with that said, what we're going to do is use a um, piece of hose. This is a larger piece of hose. You will have to pick it up separately. I believe this is 11 16 ID and diameter. You can grab this at your parts store. And honestly, you only need about a foot of it. And we're going to slide this on this end here. Take one of the hose clamps. Loosely put that over it for now. And then we can grab our other check valve. All right, and this needs to go in the hose. Well, the check valve is way too small. We're never gonna get a good seal on it. So what I figured out is if we cut maybe about a half inch piece off our 3 8 line, put that over the check valve on both sides. That'll fill up that difference. So now we can slide that over. When we put this in, you want the uh, white portion of the chuck valve to face, face the brake booster, black portion of the chuck valve to face uh, towards the engine. So that'll slide on like so. I'm going to use our clamps here just because those aren't barbed fittings like the other ones that have more of a chance of coming undone. Then I'm just going to take maybe a few inch piece of this larger line. Uh, again, push that over. Take our hose clamp and put that on as well. Now with this as a unit, um, it's going to be much easier to get installed. So I'll snug these up a little bit. I don't need to be crazy tight. And we can go to our factory line and get this uh, ran in place. So now if you look here on our brake booster, that's the line that plugs into it, the factory line. A lot of times you can just kind of pull on it, get it to pop out. may need to take a flathead screwdriver or something probably behind there. And what I did too is there's a plastic push pin fastener that kind of holds this assembly. I pried that out too, that way we can actually move it around and have some room to work. So the way it's gonna work, we'll take our fitting and assembly there. This is gonna plug in to our brake booster. So once you get that pushed in, what we can do is just kind of eyeball uh, where we need to cut our factory line. I think I'm going to go right here in this area and to play it safe you can always cut a little longer than you think because we can always come back and trim more off if need be but you know we can't really add hose so we'll give this area a shot first. And this is going to Plug right in. All right, so I went ahead, routed that length of hose from our main operating unit over to the T, cut it the length, and simply pushed it over that barbed fitting. So earlier we talked about routing the length of this brown wire inside of the cab of our Ranger. 
we can do that now but while we're at it you might as well route the nylon air tubing in there as well so again get a want a length of this the tubing that's going to run inside of the ranger is going to get plugged into our main operating unit here into this fitting and that'll be air out that's what it will be labeled but i just took the same path for our tubing and our brown wire just kind of ran it along the side here and it kind of just comes behind this area you can see here's where our tubing comes up there and our brown wire and the way i got them inside is there's actually some factory grommets a little tricky to see from out here but actually pretty easy to see from the inside um, they're solid so you will have to take a drill bit and just kind of punch a hole through them and those are what i use to route our air tubing and the brown wire inside under the dash so now underneath the dash here on our driver's side just to give you a better view this is where our airline tubing and our brown wire came through so the airline tube is going to route to an actuator cylinder that we're going to bolt up on our brake pedal arm and the brown wire is more or less going to run to the same place there's going to be a switch on that actuator cylinder that the brown wire is going to connect to so here's what our actuator cylinder looks like and this is relatively straightforward first thing you're going to need to do is take that switch i talked about this is called the reed switch and this just slides into this little housing here and you use a small flathead screwdriver just to barely snug down that bolt you don't need to crank on it or anything you just want to keep the switch from moving around from there you're going to take the whole actuator cylinder itself and use the clamp that's on it to bolt it around your brake pedal arm we are then going to have a cable that comes off of the actuator cylinder that runs down to an anchor that gets connected to the firewall as opposed to drilling new holes in the firewall and everything else i figured i'd utilize this factory stud right here this was originally kind of like a plastic nut that just kind of held down the carpet but since we had to cut the carpet out anyway to give us an area to bolt everything up i figured why not use this so i just found a flange nut this does not come included um, but the thread pitch it's going to be an M6 by 1.0. So you can grab that from a hardware store or something. And tighten it down. And what we're looking for, we want this cable to be nice and straight with the actuator cylinder. So to give you an example, if I push down on the brake pedal and pull back on that cylinder, you see that cable is nice and straight. We're also going to want a little bit of um, slack in that cable. We want to be able to move the cylinder around a little bit that way it's not super tight and to accomplish that on the bottom of that anchor it's hard to see but it's there on the bottom of it there's going to be a four millimeter hex head set screw and so you can tighten the cable up or loosen it up and once you find the desired tension you can just snug down that hex head set screw and that'll keep everything in place so once you have the tension set the way you want it, we can hook up the airline tube that we routed inside here, cut it the length nice and clean, and plug it right in. With that said, there's going to be some wires that come off of our actuator cylinder, all right, off that reed switch. This kind of got them loosely hanging here right now. And we're going to need to hook these up. And we're just going to use some buck connectors to do that. All right, so the black wire from our reed switch is going to get connected to the red wire from our indicator light. I haven't showed you where I put that yet, but we can kind of run through it backwards and uh, get it hooked up. So black wire from the reed switch, red wire to the indicator light. We'll then have the brown wire from the reed switch that goes to that brown wire that we ran inside of the cab here. 
Last but not least, we're going to have the blue wire from the reed switch. That's going to get connected to the black wire from our indicator light. And we're also going to put in at least about a foot and a half, two foot piece of wire. Put in an extra piece of wire there in that one side of the book connector. And that's going to be a ground. So that's this black wire here. Where I did, where I grounded that, we pull our dash down here. This pops down. Just routed that wire right up for this opening. Crimped on a ring terminal. Pulled out this bolt using an 8mm socket and resecured it. And that provides us with that ground we need. So now we can go over uh, our indicator light wires. So the small red and small black one. They run for a little ways and then eventually turn into this. They're in like one big sheathing here. It makes it a little bit easier. But what I did is just run them right up through here. And you kind of just sneak it right behind your kick panel. And if you just pull off this weather stripping a little bit, you can actually just use that channel to route our wiring up. So it just continues along behind the weather stripping up through there. And once we get to this pillar, what you can do is kind of just peel this back a little bit. Just kind of sneak that wire in there. And then you can just tuck that wire uh, above your headliner and in between the glass. You can just feed that all the way through. And we're going to have this plastic piece here in front of our mirror. Again, you can kind of just sneak it in that opening there and right here on the front side of this plastic is where I stuck the indicator light so this is simple some two-sided sticky tape peel it off make sure your surface is clean and just push it right into position so now that our vehicle has everything hooked up what you're going to go ahead and do is install the included fuse into the holder like so and close up that cap to begin our installation on our motorhome, we're going to be here at the back of it and we first need to mount up uh, some of our main components. First one being our air fitting uh, that will connect to the hose that goes to our vehicle side. So this fitting uh, is pretty straightforward. What I did was just attach it to this no drill long bracket that I put around the motorhome's hitch. You can grab these brackets here at e-trailer. And then I just used a couple bolts to actually secure our air fitting itself to that bracket. Then we can move on to our air tank. And again, pretty straightforward stuff. Um, I actually kind of pieced together some hardware. That way I could actually just clamp it around our hitch. So I just used some long bolts here and just a U-bolt over here. Um, as I said, this hardware don't come with the kit, but you know, you can source some and do it similar to this. Really straightforward, not really too crazy about it. Just want to make sure that it's nice and tight and um, out of the way of other components. Now we can start to get our air lines hooked up. So this will get routed over to our air tank. Now what we can do is route our other air lines. So we're going to have this one here. This will go to the metered air side on our motorhome. So that's the side where you're only going to have air pressure when you actually apply the brakes. This side is going to go to the supply line of our, of our motorhome's uh, air system. Uh, yes. The supply side is always going to have pressure. With that said, we'll get these routed up there um, to where we can tee them in. Both of the lines are just going to kind of wrap around and kind of go straight uh, along our frame rail right here in this area. So the two airlines, we're going to run them together and more or less they're just going to come straight along the side of our frame rail. And whenever you're routing these, you want to do your best to avoid any hot or moving parts. Both of them are going to just continue along here. We'll just have them loosely secured so we can kind of get a better idea. Just going to run straight. Right up until about this area. In this area, they're going to go up a little bit and kind of over our uh, rear axle. So here's where our two airlines come above our axle and where we have them teed in. So before you cut 
your motorhome's lines, you want to make sure that the air is drained out of the system so you can just hit the brake repetitive, uh, repeatedly until all that air pressure is gone. This line here is going to be our metered air line. So you're going to cut that in half, all right, just like we uh, cut our other air lines with a nice sharp tool. Put in this T-connector and then plug your metered air line from the tank in the back of our motorhome, plug it into that. This large, thick green line, that's gonna be the supply line. And same deal, you just cut that in half, plug in the larger uh, T fitting into it, and then take the supply line that we ran from our tank in the back, and that just gets plugged in right there. Now with all of our air lines ran, we can hook it up and test it out. And that'll finish up our look at and our installation of the Air Force One Supplemental Braking System on our 2021 Ford Ranger.